triangulation, a technique used mainly by speedrunners to locate the stronghold with only two eyes. But how is that even possible? It's possible through the power of trigonometry triangles and the magical F3 key. With these, we can learn exactly how triangulation works. So welcome to triangulation. So first, let's learn about the Eye of Ender, the item that started all of this. The Eye of Ender tells us one thing, the direction of the stronghold. It doesn't tell us how far or what the coordinates are of the stronghold, just the direction. So if I throw the Eye of Ender and it goes this way, somewhere along this line, the stronghold will be underneath it. So obviously this is not enough information. However, by throwing a second Eye of Ender from a different angle, wherever they cross will be where the stronghold is. It's sort of how you need to tell someone the X and Z coordinates to locate them, and not just one of the coordinates. Now, if we could somehow mark the direction that the Eye of Ender goes in, it would be done right there, our job would be done. Just throw the two eyes and follow the lines until they meet. The issue is that once we throw the eye and move, now the ah. other eye's line is unclear and we can't locate it, and then the same problem happens again. This is the main issue with the eyes. Since we can't mark the lines, we must know the distance from here as well, not just the direction that the line's going. So to find the distance, our best option is to call to the great god of trigonometry to help. But in order for this guy to even help us, we need to fulfill this one requirement that he has. The shape that we work with must be a right triangle. So for us to work with trigonometry, we must guarantee somehow that a right triangle will form with the lines that we make with the eyes of Ender. So how do we do that? Well, the answer lies within our keyboard, the magical F3 key. When we pull up the F3 menu, we can see these two numbers that indicate the direction that we're looking at in degrees. The second number denotes the direction up and down. So for these purposes, only focus on the first number. By throwing the first die and noting the degrees you're looking at down, then turning exactly 90 degrees and running in that direction for a bit before throwing another eye, we can see that we've actually made a right angle right here. No matter where the eyes go, as long as you run in a 90 degree direction away from the first eye of Ender, you can always guarantee a 90 degree angle. That means that the lines that the eyes of Ender creates will always form a right angle triangle. Now how far should you run away from the eye? Well, most triangulation charts have the angles and distances use 17.5 blocks as their running distance. This is because that equates to around 4 sprint jumps, which makes the process very repeatable. So you threw the first eye, ran perpendicularly away from it for 17.5 blocks, and threw another one. Our two eyes construct a shape like this, very similar to a right triangle. Okay, now how do we get our distance then? Well, a trigonometric equation allows us to solve for a side using just one angle and one side of the triangle. We have one side already that being the 17.5, so we just need one angle. Now, if you're thinking that the 90 degree angle works, that's not actually an angle you can use. That is a given and we have to use another one. So we're still stuck with no angle, we have to find one. To find an angle, let's illustrate it with an actual example. Say I threw my eye of ender and the degrees it headed towards was 90 degrees. Now I run perpendicularly away from it and throw it again. Now the degrees I notice is 81 degrees. These two numbers on their own mean nothing, but it's when we take the difference between them that we can see the true angle shine through. We subtract 90 from 81 and get 9. This difference ensures that no matter where you're facing, the distance between you and the stronghold will always be accurate. Now that we have this 9 number, which angle does it belong to? For reference, this is about the right triangle that the eyes of Ender created. It can't be this one, because that's 90 degrees, and it surely cannot be this one either, it's too big. So the only angle it can possibly be is the angle above the stronghold. So the angle the difference finds is the one above the stronghold, and that's our final angle. With that, we have both the angle and the side, so we just have to solve for one more final side. This is where trigonometry comes in. For convenience, the side that we want to solve for is the one produced by the second eye, that way we don't have to backtrack to the first eye. So to solve it, we just use the angle above the stronghold as our reference angle, meaning that the 17.5 blocks we established must be the opposite, while the line that we're solving for is always the hypotenuse. This means that we use the trig function sine, which equals opposite over hypotenuse. 
and using that equation, we can plug in the values. Sine of 9 degrees equals 17.5 divided by the hypotenuse. Solving for the hypotenuse, we get 17.5 divided by sine of 9 degrees, and that's our final side length. It's about 112 blocks away. So from this calculation, we just travel 112 blocks in the second eye's direction, and we get right above the stronghold. And that's all there is to it. To recap, throw the first eye and note the degrees that it goes in. Then force sprint jumps in the perpendicular direction and throw the second eye, then note that as well. Once you've done that, take the difference of both angles and plug it into the sine equation and just solve for the hypotenuse. Now it's good to note that when you take the difference, you want the absolute value. So sometimes you'll have a negative and so just drop the negative if you get it. Now you can use this equation to actually prove the chart I was talking about earlier. This chart just makes it easier and skips the calculation phase of it. Let's say that the distance between your angles was 0.4. So plug that into the equation 17.5 over sine of 0.4 degrees and your answer comes out to 2500. And that's what the chart says as well. So this is how they derived all their values. Now you're one step closer to becoming a pro speedrunner, minus all of the other stuff. But I hope you learned something cool today. Best of luck with your studies and bye bye.